certainly good to see each one. And we're thankful for those that have come to visit with us today. Our number seems to be off today, but I'm glad you're here. I'm here and the Lord's here. Amen. And there we can worship together. And we thank those for coming to visit with us today. And I trust that you'll uh, worship in your Father's house. Amen. It's our prayer. Get this uh, box turned on. There we go. Let's do remember that. Remember today at 5 o'clock, uh, the choir's going to meet and we're going to work on the uh, sound system. And hopefully we can get that up to par. So you be in prayer about that as well. We got a card from uh, uh, Tammy and Maxine and Brother Jerry. First of all, she always puts a note on the envelopes as she gives them to me. God's good all the time. I'd have to say amen to that, wouldn't you? Uh, and so the note was given to uh, to our church family. Once again, my family needs prayer, and once again, you all prayed us through another trial. I don't know <coughs> what we, what. Me and my family uh, would do if we didn't have you. We were all able to watch the sermon online. It's not the same as attending the service uh, in person, but it, it was certainly a blessing. Uh, thank you again for all of your prayers and for all, all the pastor and our staying with us while my brother was having surgery. We are believing in the uh, pray, praise, uh, the power, excuse me, of, of prayer. Uh, thank you all again, Sister Maxine. So let's just continue to pray for Hubert. That's her brother. As he's recovering, he's at home now, but they're having to uh, take turns, I suppose, to stay with him and help him. At one point, they were going to let him go to care partners, but apparently that didn't work out. So do be in prayer for him as well as all these others that are on the prayer list. Sister Carol, uh, Brother Robert's wife, Sister Harmon, she had uh, another treatment this past week, and so do be in prayer for Carol as you pray uh, as well. Uh, continue to remember uh, each one of these that are on our prayer list and hold them up uh, in prayer. It's important. God knows every name that's on there. Amen. And if you have a prayer request, we'd ask you to place it over there and the address it if possible so we could send a, uh, a card to them through our care ministry because we do pray for those that are on that. Pray for the leaders of our nation. Our nation is definitely in need of prayer. Amen. I have heard more in this past week about the providence of God, the sovereignty of God, and I'm sure you have as well. Uh, but we do this beyond a shadow of a doubt. God's in control. Amen. God's in control. Pray for our church. Pray for the Gideons. Pray for all the... Uh, folks there in Israel as well as those that uh, are there in Ukraine. Uh, war is a terrible thing. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. That's the way it works. It's not nice. It's not beautiful. It's not anything really other than just a burden to those that are involved. So be in prayer for them. Pray for the uh, folks that are being held hostage there. And pray for President Trump. Is he was uh, the one that was uh, wounded. Uh, this this world needs the Lord. Amen. Brother James taught a lesson this morning. If you didn't get to hear it, uh, you missed a blessing because you know it talks about Esther and how one person can make a difference. Sometimes we feel like, well, I can't really do that. I couldn't make a difference anyhow. But we can. One person 
can make a difference. Amen. Anybody have a spoken request on your heart this morning? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I've called and left several messages uh, for Jonathan. But do be in prayer for him. It's, it's the main object of that. that request. Anyone else? All right. Let's, uh, <clears throat> those that have unspoken requests. Amen. God bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Terry, would you take us please to the Lord? Thank you, Brother Terry. Pray for the choir and listen now as they say.
able to say I've got so much to thank him for, so much to thank him for. Thank you, choir. We appreciate that. <coughs> All right, if our young people come right on at this time. All of our young people. Okay, got them all. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. brings joy to my heart, and I'm sure it does to you as well, to see these young people come forward and sing, and uh, we're certainly thankful, we're thankful for that. All right, the ushers come forward this time. Amen. <laughs> 
Brother Scott, lead us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for another opportunity to gather this morning to worship. Father, we thank you for what you do for us each and every day. If it's the little things, Lord, that we don't pay that much attention to as we go down the road in the vehicles and the traffic and everything that we deal with on a day to day basis. We just thank you for being there, watching over us, and guiding us through each and every day. Father, we ask that you bless this nation. I'll be going on with it right now. Just continue to lift them up and help them to turn their eyes to you from the direction of guidance that they need. We ask now that you bless this offering, bless the gift, and give us the glory and the honor of keep your kingdom. We ask these things always in your name. Amen. 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 Brother Ralph's been requested that you sing thanks to Calvary. Come right on. Good to be in the Lord's house this morning, folks. A lot of smiling faces here. I wish we had more of them. Hey, the Lord will supply them when, we, when he wants them to come here. Ready? Today I went back to the place where I used to go. Today I saw that same old crowd I knew before. When they asked me what had happened, I tried to tell them. Thanks to Calvary, I don't come anymore. Thanks to Calvary, I am not the man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different. And before and the tears ran down my face I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary we don't come anymore then I went back to the house where we used to live my little boy he ran and hid behind the door and I said son oh little boy don't be afraid cause you've got a brand new daddy now Thanks, Calvary. We don't live 
tried to tell my little boy. I said, thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ralph, for that song. I guess we all can recall times in our lives <clears throat> where things were changed when we came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know it was in my life, and I'm sure it's in the life of many others. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with us, please, in the book of uh, John, chapter 6. Very familiar scripture that we have here as uh, we see the miracle as they recorded this one particular miracle it was recorded in all four of the Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I could take time today to account for each one of those, but I believe that the thought that the Lord has laid and impressed upon me comes out of the book of John in chapter 6. And verse 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover a feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great co company coming unto him, he saith unto Philip. Now I want you to notice in the scriptures when God mentions a name and a person's name particularly, that name carries with it a thought, and we'll get to that just a little later. Wherefore shall we buy bread that these may eat? And he saith unto prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred pence worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, here we go, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many and Jesus said make the men to sit down now there was much grass in the place so that the men sat down in numbers of about uh, 5,000 and Jesus took the loaves and uh, he had given thanks he dis dis burst to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sent down and likewise of the fish as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered to them to, together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above them that eat. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, this is of a truth that the prophets should come into the world. Let's pray. Father, we come into your presence today, thankful and grateful. Lord, for you, for your Bible, the Holy Spirit, for the fact of mercy, grace, and truth. Father, flows from your heart 
And I trust today it will be over the heart of each one that's present here today. Lord, we ask that the scriptures may come alive in our hearts and our lives just as though we were in that number that was there and somewhere in the picture of this uh, canon of scripture. Lord, each one of us stand. And so today I pray that your will be done. Lead us and guide us. In Christ's name we do pray. God's people said. Amen. We want to look at three particular points today as we look in the Word of God together. First of all, we want to look at this lad. And then we want to look at the loaves. And then we want to look at the Lord. And this is not a lengthy message by any means, but it's a profound message. Because every one of us, as I said just a moment ago, we all fit into this portion of Scripture somewhere. We're either the Philip that the Lord asked the question. We're either the Andrew that knew the answer and didn't realize that he knew it. And so we know that we either fit there or in the assembly of those that gather at the feet of the Lord. So you see, each time... We see this man as we know him, as the Scripture talks about Andrew. We see him three times in Scripture. And each time, this man is leading someone to the Lord. If you're familiar with Scripture, you know what those are. Each time, once he was doing the personal evangelist with his own brother, Simon, which we know as Peter, then he also once again... He was doing a mission work there because he was bringing those that were to the Lord, those Greeks, if you recall, when they walked uh, among the Lord and uh, they walked with the Lord and didn't realize it until they had broken bread that day. And then we see him in this occasion and we know that he, no doubt, had had a relationship of somewhat with this young man. I believe everybody has somebody that follows them. I believe that. I believe that they have someone that they're that is following them. I believe this lad was following Andrew. That's my thought. Because he was the one that was familiar that he had the bread and the fish. You see, a lot of people have things that they don't realize how God could use it and use them until they actually turn it over to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we see the challenge here was feeding 5,000 people. How would you like to be uh, in, in uh, control of that today? <laughs> I think every one of us would run high, don't you? I say, this, Lord, this is just overwhelming. I can't handle this. So I'm not trying to be critical of those that were there. I'm not doing that. I'm simply stating today that when God gives you and I a life, and we have life, and he said in John 10 and 10, I would that you had life and have it more abundantly. But he said also, the thief cometh not but to, to kill, to, dis, uh, to, to destroy, but I've come that you might have life. Now, I realize that as you think about that, you might think, well, I've got life, and I've been blessed in life. And I believe all of us would say that, amen? amen. But to have the ability to see how that we could actually take care of this challenge we'd have to turn to the Lord, wouldn't we? For the Lord works all things according to the counsel of His will. And that's the thing that as human beings, we have a real problem with that. God works all things according to the counsel of His will. One of the things He said, I would that none should perish and that all should come to everlasting and eternal life. This was one of the thoughts that was on our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He was God incarnate in flesh and dwelt among us. And Paul said, I beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. He's still that way today, beloved. But the difference is today, instead of him being in one place at one time, now he's everywhere. He can be here and all the way around the world. He's wherever you are, wherever others are, the Lord's there. His word will never return void. He gave that great commission, go ye out into all the world and preach this gospel, preaching it to the poor, to the widows, to the orphans, taking care of them and providing for them. So as you think about this today, in Luke chapter 9, if you'll look there with me just a little while as we look together, we ask ourselves this question. What did this young boy, what did this little boy hear while he was there? Now, we know as adults today, we probably were waiting and listening for what the scriptures say to us. But what was he listening to and what did he hear today? In the ninth chapter, excuse me, and the eleventh verse, and the Bible said, and the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them, and spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and healing them that had need of healing. I'm thankful that God didn't leave any words out of that out of that sentence. God did exactly what God does great. God was preaching the kingdom of God, healing the sick, and those that had a disease or a problem, he was taking care of that. We, we so often think that young people don't hear and understand as much as we do. I was thinking about when actually I was studying for this message, and uh, Warren asked uh, Brother Terry, uh, is the Lord coming back to this earth? Where he picked that up was in the message, I suppose, or something that was said from the podium. And it seated itself in his heart. And he wanted an answer. Now I picture this little boy as he was walking with Andrew. And no doubt his parents, his mother, whoever, had entrusted him with the well-being of that little boy. In the according to scriptures, he's probably about 12 years old. But here he is hearing these things, and it becomes a reality to him. So I say this today, the message the little boy heard was that. And the little boy followed according to John 6, verses 8 and 9. And one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? I wonder today, the little boy followed, not knowing that he was going to have the lunch to feed 5,000 people. We don't think big enough. That's our problem. We think about our collective crowd, supposedly, and I'm not being critical. We think about this church, and rightfully so. But what about people that are hungry today? Hungry for the Word of God. Hungry for the truth. You know, the Bible tells us about... Uh, Thomas, and we read that in the scriptures, and Thomas wasn't present. And the Bible said in the 20th chapter of the book of John, and Jesus appeared in the midst and the door being shut. I'm glad that he has no restrictions on him. Amen. I'm glad he does pretty much what he wants to do. And what we ask him to do many, many times, he's done that for us as well. But Peter wasn't there. He was absent, and he said, you know, unless I see for myself the hands, the side, the feet, 
shall not believe. And the Bible states specifically that seven days later that Jesus appeared again. That's the number of completion. Am I right? All right. Here's the thought that goes with that, and I believe it's spiritually backed up. That even though he wasn't there that day, he was there seven days later. And the Lord didn't ask him, why weren't you here, Peter, before? And he said, Peter, here's my hands. Here's my side. Here's my feet. Letting him know he knew all about it. Amen. And he said to Thomas, Thomas, Thomas responded, Lord, Lord God. There's only one God in this world. There are a lot of religions. There's only one God. Everybody has a religious spirit in some way or another. But that won't save you. The little boy followed the Lord because I believe, honestly, he knew Andrew. And Andrew was leading him without him being aware to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to see others saved many times. We have to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's great to pray. My grandmother had a thought, and she shared this with me. I don't know. I couldn't even begin to, to mention the number of times. But it's in my heart today. When you pray, it's great to pray. But sometimes the Lord will ask you to put legs on those prayers. Amen. So we see that. Then verses 10 and 12 of the 6th chapter of John, we see this little boy seeing another miracle. This miracle, he realized that he had a part in that miracle. My goodness, he said, I didn't realize, I'm sure he thought this, I didn't realize that I was preparing lunch for the Lord. And maybe he thought, well, maybe the Lord just wants to eat and then send everybody else away. No, he didn't have that thought. Because I believe back in Luke's gospel, he's seen the miracles of the healing and knew that if he was able to heal the sick, that he was able to do all things. That's the God I serve today. I've seen God come through when others I knew doubted me and doubted what I said. But I've seen God come through. I'll never have to stand in his presence one day and say, Lord, I was truly amazed. No, because I know what it is when God saves you. It's not just I believe. I hear so much of that, I get sick of hearing it. The devil believes, and the Bible said he trembles. It takes repentance, true God sent, Holy Ghost repentance, for a person to truly be saved. You say, how do you know? Well, the Bible says there will be a group of people there in the book of Revelation 7 chapter. He said there will be a group of people there, and they're going to say, Lord, did we not do all these things in thy name? We've cast out devils. We've healed the sick. He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You see, the devil has power to do those things too. And that's the thing that we so often forget is he can do that to deceive people. But God's not in it. We see a lot of this today. That little boy hadn't made preparations for his lunch, not knowing he was making preparations for 5,000 more. There had been a lot of people hungry to that, that day. You know, I believe the Lord would have been hungry. He didn't have anything. He was dependent upon those that were there. He was dependent upon Philip. He named him, didn't he? He was dependent on Andrew. He named him, didn't he? Both these men 
had no idea. But they seen, and I'm not being critical of them, but that's what that little boy saw that day, that through the small child, he can confuse the wise and the prudent and bring about what he so chooses to do. These children are precious in God's eyes. And I appreciate the parents for bringing them to church and teaching them, telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for that. Last of all, in John 6 and verse 11, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he dispersed it to his disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. They didn't just take a bite. They filled their appetite. What did God say when we do and give to the Lord? God said, I'll fill the cup. I'll run it over. Amen. I like it when God runs a cup over, don't you? I heard a statistic the other day, and I'll share it with you. I did Wednesday night, but some were here then. They said that if you have the ability to take the change that you have and put it in a jar or in something, some kind of container and keep that and hold on to that, that you are in the top 20% of the richest people in the United States. You don't have to have that money to live or to provide food or housing or what have you if you're able to put that aside. I think about what Brother Kenneth said to me years and years and years ago. And he said, do you steal? And I said, no, sir, I sure don't. He said, do you ever steal from yourself? And I said, I didn't know exactly where he was going. And I said, no, I don't think so. He said, I know you, no, no doubt you and Doll, that's what he called her, my wife Charlotte. I know you all pay your tithes. And I'm not questioning that, but he said, do you steal from yourself? And I was thinking, and he, I said, uh, no, not really, I don't guess. He said, if you give the Lord 10%, why don't you give yourself 10% and put that to where you and her can have a life when you get older? Makes sense, don't it? It really does. So I share that with you today and teach your children not only to lay some aside, but to tithe for the Lord. The tithe is the Lord, Micah chapter 3 and the fullness thereof. So here we, get, we go, the Lord of the glory, the creator of heaven and of earth. Uh, he didn't have as much as a crumb of bread to eat that day. I think about it every time that we gather, and I think about it a lot during the week. When I go into study and I sit down, and, and I thank God for that study. Amen. My wife probably would like it to be kept much neater. But I know where everything's at. So I don't have to go searching and hunting, okay? Anyhow, if it hadn't been for one little boy, Jesus would have been hungry that day. If it hadn't been for you and for me, there's probably some people that would have left this world lost and undone without Jesus Christ. I remember the Sunday when you and uh, a former church surprised me, and they all came and sang in the choir. And every one of those young people were saved while I was pastoring that church. They're going to be with me in eternity but I was surely blessed that day to look them over and see, God, what you did, nothing short of a miracle. See what I'm saying today? 
If one little boy can make a difference in 5,000 people, think about what we can do. Think about how God can use us to feed the people that are hungry and don't know they're hungry, don't know they need the Lord. We're living in that generation today. When God puts his hand on your life, you're able to do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Amen. God does that. This little boy, no name given, he'll go in the archives of heaven along with the widow who gave all she had for the Lord. You see, God's keeping a book. Actually, there's two sets of books. Most people that have a business, they'll do this. In case something happens, they'll still have a backup. But he's keeping a book, and it's called a book of remembrance. And it's for all the deeds that's done in the body. And then there's another book called the Book of Life where those that have accepted Christ, their name is put into that book. I'm glad that God put my name in that book. And when I stand, and I'm not worthy, but when I stand in his presence one day, I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. I walked through a mini cemetery. The other church that I pastored, when I went there, there were three graves in the cemetery. When I left, there'd been a whole church that'd been buried there. 21 years. A lot of good people, great people, great friends. I've walked through many cemeteries in different places, but I've never seen on a tombstone, well done. Put it on mine. Well done. I hope it's been a blessing to you today. Hope God spoke to your heart that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If he can take that bread and that fish and feed that multitude, he can take the four most important things in this world, which is the book, the blood, the water, and the Holy Spirit, and he can do with it what he wants to do. That's our prayer. Let's stand. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for those of you that's come to visit. I pray it's been a blessing to you. We invite you to come back and be with us. Don't forget, 5 o'clock this afternoon for the choir to come. and We're going to work on the sound system, and hopefully we can get some things uh, taken care of. I did speak with Brother Doug by text and uh, told him, that we were going to do that and he was going to see if the brother could come. I can't promise you. I hope he can. Who was with Bill Gaither for 17 years. I knew him when he sang with the uh, Kingsman Quartet. So you be in prayer for that. Amen? And pray for the church and God's will be done. Let's bow our heads as we close in prayer and ask Brother Alton to lead us in prayer. Brother Alton.